All right, hello. You're listening to MMO News. I'm Chris, and with me is Rick. What's up, guys? And Keith. How's everybody doing? What's going on? And we're here to talk about Star Wars: The Old Republic. It's going to be we're going to be talking about this for a month or about four podcasts, anyways. How long that last? And uh, sometimes it might go a little bit over because we might miss a week or something like that. But you know, other than that, we're doing pretty good. And uh, so, Star Wars. We, I have did a Twitch stream about getting on, and wow, uh, I know Rick can also agree with you know agree with me about this, but they totally changed the character creation. Whenever you log on now, it was totally different than what it is now. And uh, yeah, it was a little different when I started, but it's it's from when I started playing this, it's very close to what it was. Yeah, well, creating the character, yes, it's more it's it's different, but the same more or less. Uh, it looks different, I should say, but more or less, creating it's the same. But there's more classes per thing now, or yeah, sub, there subclasses. Are there are definitely more subclasses what, now, especially what, what for it the, looks uh, like classes. is they combine the Sith and the Jedi together because used to the Sith, Jedi subclasses were only for the Jedi's and the Sith class were only for the Sith, but it looks like. Those subclasses for the Jedi are now with the Sith, and vice versa. Is that what it looked like to you t- also? Um, not, I mean, like, the sort of, I guess. Um, That's what I got from it, because I looked, and some of those weren't available for on the Sith that were available for the Jedi part, so... I don't know. I could be just a man. Yeah, I guess, I guess before, like, you had four classes, and then you could choose a male or female for each of those classes, and then you would build it while in-game yeah. at what you wanted to be. Um, whereas now... You yeah, pick they, everything. They, they, yeah, you, you pick uh, uh, Sith Inquisitors or yeah. uh, Bounty Hunters or what have yeah, you. Yeah, because used to, when you hit level 10... You would finish. That's usually when you finish the first part, and you go to the fleet, and you can pick your subclass or whatever. Now you do it in the character creation screen. I, I don't. I don't know why they changed it. But I thought it was cool, but I guess so. You you don't have to pick afterwards. I guess. Uh, I I would say it's probably to give you just a little bit more time. Yeah. Figuring out your the, the type of class you have chosen to be. Um, now I've noticed um, once you're in the game, you don't have to visit trainers ever. Oh, that is so much better now. You don't have to worry about like, oh, I hit two levels. I haven't been to my trainer. Uh, where's my trainer? Oh my goodness, they're way over there. Or I don't even know if there's one around here. You're like, oh well, I don't have to talk to a trainer. The only thing, the only time I talked to my trainer was to get my um, writing training, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you get your your speeder training at yeah. level twenty that you need to go see a trainer for. Oh, I did it at level ten. Oh, because you're a subscriber. Oh, look oh. at me! I <laughs> need extra to get all the fancy stuff. <laughs> I get rest XP and early mount hood and. So, so Keith, this is your you first time. To, hold on, time out. Did you just refer to the ability to use a speeder as mount hood? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know what else to go with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead, go on then. So, Keith, this is your first time. What do you think about the character creations? Uh, well, I remembered, like, as I was creating my character, we talked back when we were in New World about how you couldn't change your body shape. Yeah. And we said, well, it's probably due to, you know, they'd have to have different algorithms for uh, the armor and stuff that you put on based on different body styles. But yeah. you can do that in Star Wars. And I thought that was pretty cool. You could make yourself uh, 
a big burly boy or a little skinny uh, lady boy, if you wanted. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, this is my first time playing this game, so I made a made a Jedi Knight cyborg, oh, and cool. I got all the the cyborg stuff going on my on my face. I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. I you didn't I go, ended up you didn't go. I Empire? ended up making a couple dif- Of course. Why would he go Empire? He plays good guys on everything. Because. We talked about what we were going to play, and I said, let's play Empire. And that I said, good. that sounds good. Well, you also have to take into account that I have no... I don't know anything about Star Wars. So when you said Empire or Sith, I thought... No, I Sith said... Sounded em- like I put, Empire sounded like good guys. I put Empire slash Sith or Republic slash Jedi. Or, okay. Yeah. See, I don't know anything about Star Wars. That's so why. I just that's why I did that, just so there would be no confusion. <laughs> and then there was confusion. Yeah. I, I'm sorry if I spelled it out and you still got confused. The reason why I picked the Sith is because I have a lot of Jedi Republic characters. I figured eh, I don't have hardly any Sith. Let's do Sith. Everybody said hey. that sounds good. Yeah, it's fine. I've I've got three Sith from my time playing, and I decided that I would make another Republic character, and I went and found Keith. Um, well, I didn't. I wasn't actually looking for him, but I ended up catching up to the area he was working in and found him. Well, I might just jump on my one of my low level uh, Republic characters, and since that's what y'all are playing, so. I mean, I'm I played my Sith Marauder as well, so but like I say, I got lots of stuff. I, I've even got a level 34 Sorcerer on the Sith side, so. Well, it's not like we are pro- we have to play together anyways, but I'll do what I want. How's that? <laughs> so that's what Keith's doing anyways. I'll do what I want. I mean, it's I good to play several different characters too, because <laughs> there are so many different DPS roles, and there's oh, yeah. different healing roles, and there's different tanking roles. That's what's good It'd be about good to play a little bit of everything. That's what's good about do it. Well, right, who's the DPS person? Is that Reaper or Rick? That's okay, that's what's that's what's good about you doing DPS. You can do whatever you want. There's so many rage and melee and whatever else and. Like in the last game, there uh, there was only one for me <laughs> as a tank that I had to pick. And uh, there's a couple of the healing classes that Keith can do. I mean, if you really wanted, we could rotate through what we do. <laughs> yeah. Well, we haven't really talked about right. that, but we'll talk like about that sometime. One, one, one game set, you can do the tanking and... Yeah. Whatever. Next one, but, we do DPS. We just well, well, keep things interesting. I like to tank, so that's why I'm still taking. But since we're not really playing together, I guess we don't really have to. Well, if we're going to talk about, you know, one person talking about tanking in each game, so never mind. We do have to kind of put that. So, all right. So so far coming back, I I don't. If you're starting a new character, I think it's all right. But going back to a, class that you haven't played in a while um, I don't know how that's going to be I'm going to have to log into one of my other characters and see you know after jumping in after a couple of years if you can remember how to play all the classes yeah the muscle memory still there yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which I don't think it's really there but just kind of go to a low, lower level area and maybe Get the, get your groove back down. I think that'll I think, I think that'll work. How old is this game since it was originally released? Oh, you're asking the big questions. Well, I was expecting this big question because it came to Steam uh, 2011. All right, the uh, Star Wars: Old Republic release date was December 20th, 2011. Yeah. Okay, so not quite as old as as WoW, but you'd probably be if you haven't played since 
the beginning and you're coming back to it, it would probably be like, you know, coming back to WoW and jumping into to current retail and being like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> well, this game what, did start out as a, a pay-to-play. And then after a year, a couple of years, I think, it wasn't that long. Then they went to free-to-play. And, or what some people would call pay-to-play, where you, you pay to get some gear, some mounts, and blah, blah, blah. But I don't think anything is really called, I don't think, I wouldn't call it pay-to-play because you don't pay to get really good gear or nothing. Well, that, yeah, no, it's 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 not pay-to-win. It's definitely not pay-to-win. Yeah. It's just, it's free-to-play with, with options, basically. Yeah. But you get cosmetic stuff like mounts and uh, oh, gear. But the gear starts out real low, and what you put on there or modify it, you have to actually purchase those in the game through credits and not through money. And that's what makes that gear whatever. So you can pick a look of what you want. Like if you're Jedi, you want you want Jedi robes. You can go into the cartel and buy Jedi robes, and be a Jedi, or whatever. Uh, so just whatever. If you are really wanting to looks, then you, you can do that. It just depends on what kind of gear you use to mo- or parts you use to modify it makes the gear better. In the there's codes out there for mounts. That uh, some of them still work, so I don't know if y'all have looked into that, but there are codes that you have to do it online. I don't know about Steam because sometimes Steam and playing it outside of Steam, there's two different things. Because I I ran into a problem where I went to uh, I paid for it on the internet went into Steam to play it and it wouldn't let me play so I paid for it on Steam but it caused a big problem and Steam actually had to take me out of there in order to get everything fixed I I don't remember exactly what happened that was like a year ago so I couldn't really describe it too well but you can't do both you can't play on Steam and on just the app or whatever yeah it's Two separate yeah. account things. So, it even was, though you when you use Steam, it still brings up the Swodar launcher. Yeah. So I but, called my buddy of mine who had started playing again at that time, and I was like, asked him if he had any of those problems. He said he couldn't log into his old account, so he just made a new one. I'm like, okay, well, never mind. You don't have that problem. <laughs> But so you got to pick which one you want to play, whether just through the app on on your computer or uh, on Steam. A lot of people like Steam, and a lot of people are on Steam. So there you go. And then I mean, Steam is just a nice central hub for everything. It just works. Yeah. So let's see. We talked about character creation. All right. So. Log in, first time, you start playing, storyline. Since this is your first time, Keith, how do you feel about that? Um, the whole thing kind of feels WoW-like. Like the, the controls, uh, you know, going back again to games that we've played previously. The, we played New World first, and the controls were similar enough that it made it really difficult to switch from one game to the other. It was like having to redo your muscle memory. Um, and then we played Lost Ark, and that was different enough that there wasn't really any kind of impact on switching from game to game. And this one, everything feels the same as playing World of Warcraft, which I do all the time. That's my that's my go-to game. Yeah. So... Yeah. Switching back and forth is no problem because I've set up my keybinds and everything so that it's exactly like playing World of Warcraft. All the movements the same, the targeting and uh, a- action buttons are all the same. So I like that. 
and then just the the leveling process, picking up quests, going doing doing these quests. They all feel very World of Warcraft like, and to me, that's a good thing because I like World of Warcraft. Um, but it just uh, the the concept, obviously, where you're at, the environment that you're in, the enemies you're fighting are Star Wars based instead of World of Warcraft. It's different. It's like um, comparing. DC Universe and Marvel Universe. They're two different superhero universes that are completely separate from one another, but they're very similar at the same time. That's how I feel about it anyway. Yeah, the only thing that's kind of different about it is there's a lot of talking on the when you're picking up quests and turning them in. Right, where, rather than where, reading yeah, your quest yeah. text, they, they actually talk to you, and that's pretty cool too. Um, the only thing is, it might slope some people down if you because I know a lot of people could probably read through quest text faster than they can listen to someone talking to them. So, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. Now, there's a quick way to get through the storyline by just pressing spacebar until it gets to the option of to picking something, and um, then you can just read that little bit and then pick the option, and also. When you turn in quest, you can pick light side or dark side choice or just a neutral spot, which which that's kind of cool. So you can make your Sith character a good Sith character, or you can make your Sith character a really evil Sith character. So that's a little different too. So Now, the mm-hmm. options of what you pick, of course, change everything, and your companions... You, the companions you have with you, uh, they can disprove or approve, and uh, the more they like you, the more they, more stuff they'll do or whatever. Yeah, at the very beginning of the game, one of the first quests, you go and you save this little robot from uh, where he was captured, and they give you like a preview. But then you turn in that quest, and they take your freaking companion from you. When the for, for the short time that I had that little robot following me around, that dude is awesome. He attacks, he puts up shields, he heals. Yep. I can't wait yep. to get I can't wait to get one I can keep. And they also uh, whatever you're doing, your uh, jobs I can't remember what they're called. Uh, your professions, your professions yeah. or whatever, you can actually send them to do stuff. All your professions. You can actually send them to sell all your trash out of your bags. So if you're getting your bags are full or your bag is full, you can uh, say, go sell all my junk. And they'll go sell all your junk. So that's one of the things yeah, I like the, about the, it. The companions are super, super handy. Yeah. Um, like, for example, if you're, if you're a range type character and you have to be a certain distance away for your attacks to work. You can set your companion to be a tank type character to hold the threat while you get away and you just start shooting from range. Or if you're a tank character and it takes you forever to kill something, but something takes 10 times as long to kill you, you can set your companion to be a DPS type character to do all the damage. Or if you just need the health and you're yeah. perfectly fine killing things on your own, you can set it to healer. And it is just awesome how. Um, I like all to, around. I like to say I'm as healer. <laughs> that way, I just I can just go, never have to heal, just keep on going and keep on trucking, and not really stopping because hey, they're healing me. Uh, that That's brings right. something else to light here. Uh, I had totally forgotten this even existed. When you're in game, if you right click on your portrait, it brings up a little menu um, with a that. Inside that menu has a mission difficulty preference. So if you're finding the game to be too easy, it's defaulted to a story difficulty. So you can actually set it to be a, like a, a veteran difficulty where you're experienced with this type of game and you just want a little more challenge. Um, you can set it to that. There is also a master difficulty that if you're like super king shit and best in the world, you go to, I don't know, the, the eSports of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> it, you, you can set it to that difficulty. and You get better uh, drops? Really. I, I don't know if you get better drops. 
Um, but I do know that it just makes it not so simple to to burn through things, which at, on that same note will also aid you in um, burnout. Um, you, you won't power through and just get so tired of doing this um, quest that um, you just don't enjoy the game. You can set it a little harder so that you're not burning through the quests and yeah. it's actually taking you some time to actually progress through the story and see what's coming next. Yeah. Yeah. So Keith, we kind of left you there for a second. And was there anything else you was wanting to talk about your experience where you first played? Um, I mean, nothing specific. Uh, like I said, it's very World of Warcraft like, yeah. so I yeah. think that helps. You know, if if you play World of Warcraft and you're looking for a change of pace, that might be a good game because the concept of you know picking up quests, certain symbols mean certain things, and you know as far as turning in and picking up quests are concerned, and uh, you know it, it's all very similar. And you they've got a built in kind of like. Uh, there's an add-on for World of Warcraft called Questy that shows you where to go to do quests and stuff. That's already kind of built in, so that's nice too. Uh, but it, it, if you've played World of Warcraft, then Star Wars The Old Republic, it would be an easy game to transition to if you're looking for a change. But I like it so far. Uh, in comparison to, like, we just finished Lost Ark, and I know it, I, I came across like I was... I had a bad review for that, but I didn't. Anyway, um, so I wanted to test uh, the capabilities of like gathering up a bunch of creatures and how hard is it to take a, a group down. So I got about, I don't know, probably 10 little uh, robot dudes chasing me around, and I almost died. Uh, so you got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Where oh, yeah. In Lost Ark, you don't really... I, don't, I never felt like I had to be careful. I could just wreck everything. Uh, so that helps me uh, feel like the game's a little more challenging. And I haven't I haven't messed with the, the difficulty settings that Reaper was talking about at all. But I didn't know anything uh, about it, so I'm going to have to try that out. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I'm sure that with gear and new abilities and stuff, it'll, uh, it'll become more fun. So we'll see what happens. So, Rick, how long had it been since you played? Uh, up until the other day, it's been a couple of years since I played. So, what was your first thought after you signed back on for the first time? Um, it was a little different. Um, for the like, as as we were talking earlier, the character creation, like it wasn't super different, but it was a little different. Um, definitely way more subclasses, so that was pretty cool. It wasn't just you see this, you pick it, male or female, design yeah. your character, go into game. It was really looking to see what each type of thing does. Like for DPS, for just DPS type characters, uh, some of them have like three different specs that they can be, where they're like uh, AOE damage or their uh, single target damage, or their um, damage over time type damage. Like, it it was just crazy how much different things there were when you're actually picking your class now. So that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed that. And getting back into the story of this stuff, like, it's just... The, the, the world is colorful. Um, well, I mean, for the most part, the Sith... Where they kind of start, oh, it's just like a rust planet. It's not that nice, but yeah, the, the Empire side is definitely a lot nicer. Um, <laughs> forest and grass and rocks and stuff. It's pretty cool. I do like it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's just a very, very nice looking game for free to play. You know, and like they're they're constantly releasing content for it, and they've been doing so for almost 11 years now and the, you, you log in and you still see people on like new characters like it's it's not something that is fading away and disappearing and that's really nice to see for a game that is free to play I, so, I just uh, came across it November 15 2012 when they came 
free to play so almost a year they were just just a little over a month shy of uh, being a subscription base for yeah yeah you know what and I think that was probably a really good move for them yeah. um, I like uh, they they were probably having difficulties with it because it was a subscription and you know EA never really had a great name for itself or its type of things but I mean it's still an EA thing and they kind of you know they have their microtransactions. Every game has them these days. It's, uh, but I, th- I think going to a free to play was probably a, one of the best moves they could Definitely. have done. I wish World of Warcraft would go to free to play. <laughs> well, with uh, oh, at least at least for classic, it, it kind of sucks that you pay for a subscription for for retail. Who like who that. bought Blizzard? Oh, uh, Microsoft. Yeah. They're talking about their people are talking. They're hoping it goes on the uh, on the console, onto the Game Pass. Game Pass, yes. So they well that way you're only paying one subscription for everything plus while. Wow. So that it might be happening. You never know. If they do it, it would be pretty neat. Yeah. But I I don't I don't know if they will because. Uh, Look at all the money that that was coming in just yeah. from World of Warcraft. So they could have two things going. It could be ridiculous. <laughs> or, or just make one for all the, their games, one for WoW, and then another one for that's a little bit more than, but a little bit cheaper if you have them both. So, yeah, I don't know. But uh, my me coming back. I first noticed, of course, the character creation screen. I like it a lot better because it actually shows your character what it looks like. It gives you a description of your class and everything in there. And so I I really liked how they had changed it. It looks a lot cooler. Um, Of course, it was already pretty cool to begin with, but this is a little bit better. It's improvement. So you can tell they're improving the game. So that's what it first showed me is they're, they're changing it. They're improving it. And they're making people want to come back to it. And then I log in. I, of course, I'm leveling quicker, which is good because you don't want to take forever like you did when it first started. Because it's just like, wow, whenever you first log in and you, you go to 60, the next expansion comes out and you go to 70. Well, people who are first starting to play, they're wanting to, they're wanting to hurry up maybe to catch up with everybody and not wanting to take all the time it originally did so you know they got to bump up the xp so i'm liking that they're doing that just like wow did and uh, it plays just like it did before they really changed too much they made it look a little bit better i think and the quests you know are still you know you talk 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 if you want to skip it you can so they haven't changed too much but of course i haven't got up there to the bigger levels yet so have to wait and see on that. I mean, I, like I was saying earlier there, uh, just because I'm in game right now and I'm looking at my little bar here, how I was saying that you log in and there's people playing. Right now, there are 94 people in this little area, uh, in this planet's instance right now. Yeah, cool. Like it's it's crazy that there are this many people on in this tiny little area, yeah. and that it, it looks like there might be some people that you know might be coming back as well and um, relearning their characters. So there's a couple seventies, a seventy-five, an eighty out here. So yeah. people figuring out what their class can do again after taking a break. So, but, um, I, they just did a patch. I don't know what the patch was. I'm looking for news. I can't find it. Well, I don't know if it was a patch or what because they just had the servers go down and they came back up. Yes, I think it was yesterday. But I can't find anything about what they did. Um, I've got it here. Um, let's see. So they have an issue that is being investigated. Oh. Um, players can't defeat Darth Malgus in Ruins of Null Flashpoint story mode. Oh. 
Um, yeah. So there's a forum post that um, has all the info about that. Uh, oh, sissies. <laughs> Um, and then there's, uh, some hardware fixes. Um, there was an issue with the game that was pre preventing players with the Ryzen HS processors from logging into the game. So they did a fix there. Um, PVP rewards have been shipped out. Uh, They've upgraded the background of the character sheet window to make it easier to see. Uh, outfitter tab is correctly showing current outfit instead of equipped gear. It, it, it's quite a list, actually. That, that would take me probably three days to read. Yeah. But it's, it's the nice thing about this, this uh, game is that they are constantly, constantly releasing data or um, content and constantly fixing any bugs that pop up with their content but they don't take a long time to drop the content you know like world of warcraft yesterday we sat around for what six and a half hours before we could get back on for uh them to just make a couple things not sold out basically is what happened yesterday and add a flight path uh but Sodor is only usually down for an hour or two and if it's longer they tell you beforehand that yeah it's going to take this long to do yeah all right so that's about the only news i have about that so tips the only thing i could say is look at the character creation screen really read what uh, you want to do and make sure if you want to DPS make sure it's a DPS class and tank and tank class it will tell you or a healing class so it tells you everything on the character creation screen when you pick the class of subclass uh, actually whenever you click on that subclass before you actually pick pick it when you click it it'll tell you hey this is a tank class and blah 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 this is a DPS class, it's ranged, or whatever. It will tell you, so make sure you're looking at all that. Don't get too excited, just say, I want to be Jedi, okay, whatever this one is, or yeah, boom, and start playing like, oh, well, wait a minute, what am I, is it a tank? What? Am, I don't know what I'm doing. So just make sure you watch that, and it will give you a good rough idea of if you're going to like that class while you're playing. So play it for a couple levels. If you're not really getting into it, swap it. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy the game. Any tips for you got, Rick? Um, take your time. Uh, don't try to burn through the story of this because it's really good. Uh, it, each um, type of uh, character like uh, for Sith Inquisitor or uh, Bounty Hunter, their story is different. Take your time and and play through it, enjoy it, and uh, yeah, don't don't rush. Just have fun, and yeah, that's it for me for now. All right, Keith. Ah. Uh... Yeah, I think my biggest one is going to go back and kind of coincide with what you were talking about with uh, selecting your classes. So if you want to play a healer class, let's say, uh, you select one of the classes from the screen that he was just talking about that says you can be a healer. And then when you actually get into the game, you have to open your character screen and then you go to the third or fourth tab over. It's like your, I can't remember what it's called. I'm not in the third tab, tab. It's called it's combat called. style. Okay, come, you go to your combat style tab, and then it's going to pop up three little bubbles next to your character where you can select uh, one of the three specializations for that particular 
class that you selected. For example, I'm playing a sage that allowed me to do either range DPS, melee DPS, or healing, I think were the three options. <clears throat> and then they had different like telekinesis options for each one of those. So one of those bubbles is going to be to heal. One of them is going to be for the range DPS. One of them is going to be for the melee DPS. And as you level up and hit different leveling milestones, based on which of those bubbles you have selected, that's what different abilities are going to be unlocked for you. So if you're selected that you want to be a healer, then you'll have healing abilities available. I'm assuming. I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, but it, it changes that tr ability tree that you can you can work with. Yeah, that is 100% correct. So like it, as uh, Chris was saying, if you wanted to be a tank, same thing. You would open it up because it would probably start you off as DPS type class first. And then you would open up that combat style page and it's uh, there's three bubbles right beside your character's leg underneath the discipline section. And for my character in particular, I'm a Jedi Shadow. So my disciplines are... Uh, kinetic combat which is um, defense and melee so that would be a tank spec infiltration which is direct damage and melee and then serenity which is damage over time and melee um, so yeah it's it all depends what you want to be just just make sure that if you're signing in to only do tanky stuff go in and select the tanky stuff and Exactly. You'll you'll see the ability tree on the right hand side of all of that. Switch what abilities you're going to learn at the different levels. Yeah. All right. And uh, if you always wanted to be a Jedi, now's your chance. If you want to be a smuggler, now's your chance. Or, oh, crap! I forgot what those dudes are called. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be a stormtrooper, there you go. Okay. All right, so, all right, if anybody else has anything else to say? Uh, no, that's it for me for today. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm uh, kind of anxious to get some extra time under my belt playing that. Uh, it seems like it's going to yeah. be something on. Yeah. All right, so until next week, have fun playing the game. Play the hell out of it. Deuces. Ah, oh, come on, dude. You guys love it. If you would like to reach the show, you can email us at mmonoobspodcast at gmail.com.